Hi, this is John Schwabisch from policyviz.com, and today I'm going to show you how to create a forecast area in a bar chart. What do I mean by creating a forecast area in a bar chart? Well, let's take a look at our final graph. You can see here what we might have in a particular case is we have two series of data. In this case, I've got some negative values and some positive values. And I have the observed values going back to 2004. So from 2004 to 2020, here shown in the blue shaded cells, I've got actual values. And then going forward, we're going to project what might happen in the future. So from 2021 to 2026. And what I want to do in this particular graph is to differentiate the actual values from 2004 to 2020 versus the projected values from 2021 to 2026 by adding this gray shaded area behind those bars. So this is gonna require a couple of things. We're going to use a stacked bar chart. We're going to uh, use a scatter plot, and we're also going to utilize the fact that we can add a secondary horizontal and vertical axis to this particular chart. So let me show you how to create this chart type. As you can see here, I've got the core data, series one and series two. I also have a forecast uh, series that's going to be equal to zero during the actual observed period between 2004 and 2020. And then I have actual values. I'm going to set them at 15 for the projection period. So I'm going to select my data and I'm going to insert a stacked column chart, the second option right here. And to make this graph a little bit bigger, I'm gonna make it larger, but I wanna keep the ratio between the horizontal dimension and the vertical dimension of the graph the same. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the Format tab. I'm going to select this checkbox so that the ratio stays the same. And I'm gonna change the height here to six. And when I hit Return, notice I go six inches by 10 inches instead of three by five. So here's our chart. And what we wanna do is basically put these gray bars behind the orange and blue bars and make them um, a little bit wider. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select my orange bars to start. And I'm gonna put them on the secondary axis. So to do that, I wanna format the data series. I hit plot series on the secondary axis. This immediately looks pretty weird, but let's select the blue series and also put that to the secondary axis. And now we're getting a little bit closer. Now I have to do it this way because what I want to do is have the gray bars behind the blue and the orange bars. So the gray bars have to be still tagged to the primary vertical axis, which is over here on the left side. Now notice that the secondary axis goes from negative 15 to 15. And that's why I've set the forecast values equal to 15. So I want them to go to the maximum position here up to 15. So I want to ensure that that happens. And to do that, I'm going to format my primary vertical axis. I want to make sure that it starts at zero and goes to 15. So I'm going to type those in and hit return. And so you can see that now these gray bars are filling up this entire space. Now let's um, make them a little bit wider. And so I'm gonna select just the gray bars and I'm gonna change the gap width from 150%, which is the default in Excel, down to 0%. And you can see that now it fills up this whole space. I'm gonna change the color, it's a little too dark. I'm gonna make that a light gray instead of that dark gray or even that red. All right, next thing we need to do is basically clean up this graph a little bit. I wanna get this axis, label, the y-axis label here, on the left side of this graph. And I also want to align grid lines to that axis instead of the way they're aligned to my current primary axis on the left side because that's not really data, that's just, just a placeholder. So what I'm gonna do first is delete my existing grid lines. And I'm gonna add grid lines to this secondary vertical axis. So to do that, I'm gonna hit the chart design tab, add chart element, and I'm going to go to grid lines and add secondary major horizontal. So I want them horizontal and I want just the large values. And now you can see that they're lined up right there. Okay, so what do I need to do to move this axis over to the other side? Well, all I really need to do is get my secondary horizontal axis turned on so that I can move that vertical axis over. Let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna go back to my add chart element. Now I'm gonna to go to axes. You can see secondary horizontal is not turned on. So I'm gonna select that. And when I now select that horizontal axis, I can format it as I do over here on the right side to put the vertical axis crossing at the automatic point, which is gonna move it over to the left side of the graph. 
Now I can turn off my tick marks and my labels. I always turn these off as opposed to deleting them because sometimes when you delete them, it undoes some of the formatting. So I'm gonna just gonna turn them off as opposed to deleting them. I'm gonna do the same thing for my original primary vertical axis. Again, back to my format axis menu. I'm going to turn the label position to none. And now I've got these lined up quite nicely. So the chart's almost there. Last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the 0% axis line, that grid line right in the middle of the chart, is a little bit darker than the other grid lines to differentiate it so that it's very clear that I have some negative areas and some positive areas in my data. Now to do this, what I need to do is add a scatter plot to draw this line. So I'm going to select data. And here you can see that I'm on the Mac version of Excel. If you're on the PC version, it's gonna be a slightly different looking window, but it's gonna be the same process. So if you're on a Mac, you're gonna hit this little plus button. If you're on a PC, you'll hit add. And here I'm gonna fill in the name. This will be the axis line. And for the Y values, I'm gonna set this equal to zero because we want it to sit on that zero axis line. And when I say okay, notice that nothing's happened to this chart because I've added a value of zero. Let's change this to a value of 10. And now you can see that I've added a value right here. So that's that new bar that Excel has added right here. Now let's change this to a scatter plot. So I'm gonna select my bar, go to the chart design menu and go to change chart type, scroll down to XY scatter and change this to a scatter plot series. Now, if you're again on a PC, what you're going to do is click the change chart type menu you'll get a new menu that'll pop up. And at the very bottom, the last option in that menu will be a combo chart option. And so you wanna select the combo chart option and change this particular series to a scatter series. In the Mac, I just need to select that yellow bar, navigate to this menu, select scatter. And now you see I have this little yellow dot. Let's go back to where we selected our data. So I'm gonna to go to select data in my axis line, you'll see that I have a space for the X values and the Y values. So I'm gonna fill in the series reference for X, which is gonna be that value of 12. So in cell B27. And notice in these other series, there's only space for the Y values because those are just the bars. So there's no X component or X dimension here. So with the axis line, there is an X dimension. So I'm gonna hit okay. And you'll see that my, my dot here has moved over it's in the 12th position. So 2015 in this particular graph represents the 12th position. So 2004 is one, two, three, four, and so on to 12. I'm gonna change the Y value to zero. And now my dot is right on that axis. How do I draw the line? Well, in this case, I'm gonna use error bars. So I'm gonna select that dot. Again, go to the chart design menu, go over to add chart element and go to error bars. In here, I can select any of these just to start. So I'm gonna hit standard error, doesn't really matter. And now I wanna format those error bars, but you can see, I can't really see them here. So how do I select them? Well, if you go to your format tab and go to your drop down menu on the far left, everything in your chart will be listed here. As you can see, Excel also lists the error bars. And for a scatter plot, Excel adds an X error bar and a Y error bar. I'm gonna select the X error bar option and over in this formatting menu, I'm gonna change the end style to be no cap, and I'm gonna change the value here. So I want this fixed value. I want it to, to stretch all the way across this graph. So I'm right in the middle at 12 is the X value of this point. So I'm gonna try 12 and see what happens. Well, I've got a nice line here, thicker line, but you notice that it's a little too far. It goes all the way across, sort of scrunches the rest of this chart. So let's try 11 and see what happens there. Well, the bars are lined up, but the line intersects the middle of that of those endpoint bars. So let's try 11.5, and that gets us right in the middle. And I could, of course, go in and I can make this line a different color. I can make it a little bit thicker. Lots of ways to style this particular line if I wanted. So two last steps is to hide the marker. The way I like to do it is select the marker, go into my format data series, marker options, and turn it off to none. And then even though I can't see it right now, I'm gonna get that Y error bar and I'm going to delete those. So they're not even there, so I can just delete them. And that's pretty much it. And then we can talk about styling, right? I can maybe delete my legend. In this case, for this chart right now, I'll delete the title. I'll change my colors. 
select a red for the top, and maybe a gray for the bottom. It has to be a little bit darker than this gray, obviously. I can add data labels to these series. They're right in the middle. I prefer, in this particular chart type, I'm going to make them white so we can see them. And I'm also going to move them to the end of the bar. I like to do that because it reinfor helps reinforce the value of the data, the data value. I'll do the same thing for the top. Add data values. I will change the color to white. And I'll put their position at the end of the bar. You'll also notice that some of these numbers are being cut off. Well, just like we did with our original forecast series, we can change the width, change the width of these columns to be a little bit wider. So I'm going to go back into my gap width menu and I'm going to change this to 70% and that will make those bars a little bit wider so now those labels are visible. So as you can see what we, we, we've created is a stacked bar chart where we have a forecast area on the far right side. All this chart requires in the end is a stacked bar chart where I'm going to add the forecast bars to the primary axis, the stacked bars representing the actual data values to the secondary axis and then just do some formatting. So I hope this tutorial was useful. If you have questions, please reach out and also go to policyviz.com for more tutorials about Excel, data visualization, and presentation skills.